ladies, gentlemen, let the show begin. All right. Do you like video games? I know you do. What about entertainment? We got that two video game armada video game video game armada. What's the name? Video game armada. This is the one drawn the gamer boss bronze. And the information on for two backlash. Coming back to you with another let's discuss of E3 press conferences. And today, or rather this one, because there's a few today, uh two, maybe possibly three, depending on how we feel, of Microsoft. And, woo boy, let me tell you, all the other press conferences got a lot of work to do to compare to this one. Because the Microsoft is definitely swinging for the fences. They had showmanship, presentation, aeronics, <laughs> and, of course, those sweet, sweet games. And I'm talking about game games that make you excited and kiss your mom and said, I love the games! <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with the games. One by one, that in no particular order that we liked. But if we if we do need an order, I have a list right here. Bam. All right. All right, well, let's see. Let's start with Battletoads. Uh, I know that's not many people would start with that, but it, and I gotta say the, the animated the animation isn't quite what I want. But I know the gameplay is going to be great, and to see Battletoads again just made me excited for the first time in the whole conference. If I excited, I mean, I, I popped here and there, for you people who want to follow my wrestling jargon, for a couple of the other announcements. I was legit excited. I was like, yes! But I saw Battletoads, so that's going to be amazing. Battletoads is going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, I do have to agree. The animation is just a skosh too cartoony. Just a little bit, but I'll get over it, trust me, as I get to smash ugly mutants in the face with genetically altered super soldiers that happen to be toads. Or crossbred with toads? You Can you imagine beat em up action like you haven't had since back in the late 80s, early 90s? Cross with the frustration of that um, speeder sequence. Oh, back in my day, the speeder sequence was a scribe side scroller, and you would have to s uh, sweat and pray and break every digit in your hand to pass those things. Now it's going to be when your direction you're moving, instead of side scrolling to the side, you're going up to the screen. Uh, I forget what that's called. That's kind of like forced perspective. I know what you mean, but I don't. I know I don't know. Yeah, that. So it should be easier. But then again, they did show some later, the tail end of that sequence, and it looks going to be pretty tough. So everyone gets to be tortured, like we used to be tortured doing those stupid sequences. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hype. I am really hype. Can't wait for that game to come out. After having cameo appearances in Shovel Knight and Killer Instinct, this is the first Battletoads game. Well, first legit Battletoads game, then, you know, probably, probably 18 billion eons to start with. But it's also the first Battletoads game among those eons where you can play as all three of the Toads since the arcade port, which I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on it, that many people have never played. <laughs> At least not without an emulator. Ooh, ooh, um, who said that? <laughs> I wonder if the Dark Queen's going to be there. Hubba hubba. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe she'll be wearing a full suit now. Oh, boo. Oh, <coughs> boo. <laughs> <coughs> Mortal Kombat 11. <coughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But whatever. Uh, moving on. I'll pick the next one. And I'm going to start with The Outer Worlds, which was made by the original creators of the Fallout Masterpiece Universe. As much as I do love Bethesda, and I do, some people out there are sort of being same timey to downright hypocritical to the poor Fallout universe as of late. 76 may have not have been their cup of tea. Me, it's fun. I applaud them for attempting a creative approach to their long-established, you know, series. Do their cross between third, um, first-person shooter and RPG. Not having uh, NPCs there also gives it a nice creepy feel. Like you're all alone. Except for the other player just running around beating up giant mutant flies. But still... Yeah. 
all alone. <laughs> and you were trying to figure out why there are no NPCs in this world, because that's part of the mystery. But the point is, I don't mind uh, Fallout 76, and I would still be playing if it didn't have one crippling, not design flaw, but I guess realism flaw, is that you have to keep eating and drinking. Look, <laughs> I gotta keep eating and drinking in real life. I don't want to keep eating and drinking in my game life. That like, just breaks me. It's like, oh, great. Now I'm getting hungry. Oh, I'm getting so hungry. I can't see and shoot straight. I mean, to be fair, that's not the first time uh, Bethesda ever did that in a Fallout game. Yeah, know? but that was like an option. If you want to be all Mr. Hard Hardcore Belt Bear Grill Survivorist, you certainly can. You can turn that on. But in this game, it's like you got to do it. No questions asked. And I said, well... I can't play this game. I want to I want to beat up mutants without having getting thirsty. Yeah. I want to craft a new laser gun without getting hungry. And oh by the way, the food spoils since refrigerators don't exist. It's a video game. At least if you're if you're going to have food, well, at least make it uh, an optional thing to do and have the common decency to punch or shoot at a barrel and I, grab a chicken from it I, and eat it. I yes, and I've had in in comparison I have the same nine meats that I beat up some poor herbivore dinosaurs from Monster Hunter World since a year and a half, and they haven't spoiled on me yet. And if I ever get hungry and not be a mooch should get the free foods, I could you eat them anytime. But that is 76's only flaw. But I'm we're kind of getting on a tangent here. Yeah. The point is, is that it's fine. But people don't agree with us. So that's why they're excited about Outer Worlds. And I'm just excited about it in general because it's got space, it's got choice, it's got humor, both dark and otherwise, and it gives you RPG-like elements, very similar to the current fallouts that you may or may not know. Like the ability to slow down chime and accurately shoot someone with a stylized kill shot. Sounds familiar? You bet it does, but that's okay. Because, as we say, always say in the video game Armada, originality is... Uh, is, is overrated. There you go. Yes. Or for suckers, but uh, that would be me. <laughs> anyway, it's coming out October the 25th of this year. Pick it up. You'll love it, especially if you like Fallout or if you're not in love with Fallout anymore. Pick it up anyway, because it's a good alternative. Yeah, it looks interesting. It really does. I think it'd be neat to see how that game goes, even though it does take more than a few beats from Fallout and these choice choice games. Your your alignment game, are you good, are you evil? It's been that way since GTA, kind of, sort of, and Fable, so whatever. It's good. Um, before we continue, let's go to the two games that, you know, are big does at this point. One we covered, yes, one we covered in our last conference with EA, Star Wars Fallen Order. We talked about that already. Uh, just a uh, quick summary if you're just watching this one. Game looks neat. Uh, I can't wait to play it, or at least watch the Omni Gamer play it. Sometimes I do a lot for the Armada and out other places, so I don't get to play too many games, but I might play it. It sounds, it looks good. It looks really, really good. The other one is Borderland 3, which if you had, if you haven't heard about that game already, man, where have you been? Which rock have you been living under? Is it comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically there's a new mode that Xbox, uh, said. It's like, uh, starring Lilith, one of the six sirens that are left in the universe. Well, not exactly a new mode. Like, a new DLC for a game that's been out for ten plus years. Uh, Borderlands 2. Yep, just to get people hyped up for three. Yeah, so, those, th those are existing. They both look great. Uh, Star Wars, like I said, twice already looked great. Borderlands uh, three, I seen the, I seen videos of the uh, beta, beta and preview gameplay. Good, so you know, look out for those. Those look neat. Yep. Next up on the list is Bleeding Edge, which, as far as I can tell, is like a combination of Sunset Overdrive, uh, Cyborgs, and a little Overwatch if you like that sort of thing. Uh, but what else did you say, Backlash? What did it remind you of? Oh gosh, what did it remind me of? Oh, uh, it kind of does remind me of Fortnite, too, with the, like, the wacky, crazy characters. Uh, what did it remind me of? It, it reminded of, like, one of those throwback old games from the 90s, 
I want to say War Gods, but War Gods didn't have no. but one cyborg. Uh, what did I say? It was uh, not Bomberman, but it looked like one of those games where uh, um, it just looks like a weird mashup of uh, cyborg robot games. It's it's okay looking though. Yeah, it looks fun to me. I, it looks like great fun too, and it's probably. Hopefully, cross your fingers, not going to be in the Battle Royale style. I'm sick of that. Yeah. It's at 4 p 4 so maybe it's going to be something like Team Fortress 2, maybe. A yeah. new style of Team Fortress 2. Yeah. New characters, but same modes, like Team Deathmatch and Capture the Flag and all that. Yeah. I'm excited for that sort of thing. It looks okay to me. I'm not sold yet, but I'm not going to completely toss this out. It looks neat. I'm going to definitely put a pin in it. If I have some free space to play some mindless cyborg killing action, then I will pick it up. And maybe I'll convince you on the way. Okay, so we I, I miss, you might be able to help me with the title, Bronze, but Akira Toriyama has graced us with another Dragon Ball Z game. Ah, yes. That would be Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Where, stop me if you heard this one, it's a story about the first couple sagas of the Dragon Ball Z mythos. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm awake. I'm awake. Dragon Ball. Yeah, I, 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 I the, 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 the Saiyans, uh, Frieza, Cell. Ooh. Yeah. I'm awake. I'm yeah. awake. Well, you know, it's like, so they show my boy Amcha getting dissed again, and that stupid crater. But they also, I mean, they also show Tien, Krillin, and uh, Piccolo dying in their respective death scenes, Vegeta too. You know, it's all about Kakarot. But the graphics look okay, so... Well, I'm, it looks more than okay. It looks great. Yeah. I will say this for this game that's coming out in the future. It looks fantastic. But the problem is for me, and if you if you are a fan of VG Armada, then you know my, not hatred, but my, uh, uh, what's the word? Disenfranchise? No. My uh, disagreement? Maybe. Yeah, ap apathy? Not, not even apathy. The point is, I don't like it when they base Dragon Ball Z games, or Dragon Ball Super games now, I guess, keep following the same three arcs. Saiyan, Frieza, and Cell with Boo thrown in. I've, I've watched that anime. I've watched it many times. I've played many games based on those three to slash four arcs. So, so I want to do things original, but I will say this. We've been getting a lot of original Dragon Ball Z uh, slash Super content for a while now, so I'm good. And I'm not going to complain too much. So, so yeah, so Ocean Double Dragon Ball, Ocean Double Dragon Ball Z, Funimation Double Dragon Ball Z, Funimation Double Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Z Kai, Dragon Ball Abridged, Dragon Ball Super. We, we've done it. That's not including the games. We've done it. Mm -hmm. Even little bits of the original Japanese anime. We've done it. Mm-hmm. But, again, uh, this looks pretty amazing, and if you don't mind reliving the best chronicles of Goku in high fidelity, 1080p, looking awesome at possibly 60 frames per second, then this is the game for you. Me, I'll wait for all that good stuff, but with at least Super, Dragon Ball Super, going on past Z. Yeah. I'm done with Z, replaying of the Zs. Yeah. It's making me Zs. Yes. Z, 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 Z. Next up, Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Very nice looking, very colorful, slightly creepy yeah. platformer uh, about a white cat thing that's for Probably some reason. Wisp. Yeah. Probably getting chased down by dark evil animals like evil spiders, and evil wolves. wolf, and some weird crow mecha hybrid thing. He also probably got bat with muscles. I don't know. I don't know. Looks good, though. Yeah. Looks and again, fun. that's one of those tertiary games that if I have some time in my very busy gaming schedule, I give it a try. I didn't play the first one. But then, you know, maybe I'll play the first one, then this one. Sounds good to me. Uh, I probably, let's go mention the two, count of two Lego games that have come out for the Xbox. One is more of a add-on. Uh, that's for Forza Motorsport. You get to play as a Lego, Lego version of the race cars. Yeah, I know. I know that when it comes to Forza, uh, Forza Sports, anything that's not something 
people were interested. Heck, I'm not even interested to a certain point. But Xbox knows that. And they got you this time. Because it got me this time. When you hear, everything is awesome. And you see a bunch of Lego cars speeding down the highway. Said, okay. Yeah, and there's an instruction derby. Looks what looks like an instruction derby. Which, you know, it's Lego. It's, it's like you take advantage of the destruction elements of it too. But we haven't had a good vehicle combat game in a while. Let's hope it is vehicle combat. Because I miss it. They're not going to make a burnout. I understand that now. Yeah. But uh, I need something to fill the hole. If Forza can do it, I'm all game. Get hype. I'm hyped for that. I can't believe that. I've never played a Forza game before. Mm. At least maybe not from a doubt side of a demo. But uh, this might be my first one. The other one is Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, Lego game. You played one Lego game. You played them all. But this has all nine. Hear me. All nine. Star Wars movies and the three trilogies, the 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 OG Ballas, the prequels, and the current generation. That means that the Rise of the Skywalker. Is that what it's called? That's the last movie. Yes, that's. I don't. Will that have the last? The Rise of the Skywalker. Yeah, I think so. They said all nine. So. Oh yeah, you're right. They did say that. So spoilers, if you're going to get that game, you're. Might find out what happens. Although, I don't know when that game's coming out. Maybe it'll be after the movie? Yeah, I think so. I know Legos was popular back in the early arts when it comes to Star Wars. And, you know, Lego doesn't seem to be any less popular now. So, yeah. If you like Legos and you like Star Wars, go for it. Uh, speaking of things that resemble Legos, Minecraft! Oh, wow, yeah. And you know what? They actually showed a game that I might be interested in playing with Minecraft. Minecraft Dungeons, uh -huh. where if you like Diablo and Gauntlet, this is that, but with Minecraft characters featuring, I guess, character classes, maybe? Or you create your own character class, you, you find treasures and weapons, but you have to fight waves upon waves of enemies in these dungeons, and you're, you could also get lost in a dungeon. But there's four people you can play with, so there you go. That's coming out next year. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, so, let's talk about one of the heavy hitters. Cyberpunk 2077. Is that right? You got it. Got it in one. Yeah. So they released it on the trailer. Mm -hmm. I won't be spoiling too much about the trailer in within itself. Mm -hmm. Let's just say they follow continuity. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm not too hep to the game. It looks interesting enough. But then they get they had to turn around and got me. At the end of the trailer, who but appears but what was his name? Silverhand Bill? <laughs> uh that was uh Ah uh, shoot. Now you got me all confused. Uh what was his name? Uh not Cool Hand Luke. Uh Johnny Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand, yeah. which we're we're thinking is Johnny Hill Silverhand. And who should be Johnny Silverhand? It's motion capture actor presentably uh Presumably, because he looked exactly like the the character, like the person voicing him, so probably most captain actor the no out of that freaking Keanu Reeves. I know, right? That guy is literally everywhere, and I couldn't be more pleased. Backlash even had to remind me that the guy is literally everywhere, mm -hmm. and I wholeheartedly agree. Now he is going to be in this video game, and if people are not hyped up for. 2077 Cyberpunk, which is impossible. They are now because of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. John Wick is going to be in the game. Crazy, isn't it? Not the actual John Wick, but the guy playing John Wick. Yeah. Who's also going to be equally as in, uh, important character. So, yeah. Oh, and we got a release date, people. March the 8th. 16th? 16th, yeah. Yeah. March the... No. April. Excuse me, people. April the 16th, 2020. So, yeah. Let's hope you're not busy during that time. Yes. Eat your vitamins and stay healthy. You gotta play this game. Mm -hmm. Just for the sake of Keanu Reeves alone. <laughs> ah, anyway. I'll get this out of the way because I'm not a big fan of the horror element. But Blair Witch. Yeah. It's a horror game now. Yeah, I mean, I, I guessed it. I didn't think I was right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you play as a guy and his dog trying to find a lost kid. But, uh-oh, craziness is happening in the woods slash forest. And you're trying to figure out what's going on and or survive. You have a camcorder. 
1996. So yeah, that's a thing. If you like horror and you like the old movie, there's a game for it now. Yeah. Not now, but whenever it comes out. All right, so let me think. We're, we're, we're running, we're running. They said 60 games, not all of them they really gave all that attention to. Ah, uh, but what else is left? Um, you know, I'll throw you a bone so you can talk about another one. Sure. Uh, there's a Gears of War Funko Pop edition. <laughs> you get to play as the toys. The toys that everybody wants to look like now. Yes. Less bloody, though. They're yeah. fine. You know, it's just for fun. If you want to play something on your phone while you're being bored, waiting at the dentist's office, you can play that. It's not out yet, but it looks pretty good. I'll give them credit. You know, they take something as serious and gritty as Gears, and you turn it into a silly uh, toy-based combat shooter. Yeah, that was kind of funny and weird. And, def- and uh, tower defense. Not to say that's not that that's how it is for the actual Gears. Gears 5, which will be coming out shortly. Now, forgive me, people. I haven't played Gears 4, so I don't know what's actually going on in Gears 5. I'm going to have to play Gears 4, then play Gears 5. But it looks like it's going to be very interesting what, what the trailer showed us. The one main, one of the main characters is having multiple personality disorder. She's having heads coming out of her head, which at first they were heads of her head. Mm-hmm. And then they were heads of, I'm guessing, all these past Gears of War characters because I was confused at first because I didn't know that was Marcus Phoenix and his ragtag bunch of misfits. And it said... Bound by Glory? Yeah, that's Bound by Glory 5. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look it didn't look like much of a Gears by that title alone. I had to tell Backlash that was actually Gears because if didn't if I didn't say so, it wasn't gonna be like, oh that's Gears. That makes sense. Yeah. It didn't make sense, but I'm all hyped for it all the same. I just gotta play some serious catch up, man. Alright, and shout out to Austin Creed, aka Xavier Woods of the New Day. Former WWE champion AJ Styles and and Tyler Breeze of the WWE. Welcome back to NXT, Tyler. Thanks for your cameo appearance. You didn't do guys didn't do much aside for playing the game, but it's always good to see wrestling. Oh, wrestling. oh, you, oh you know that but it's gonna show up on up up down down. Yes. But uh Oh, that's the other thing. What? Oh yeah, thanks for that. I completely forgot. So if that wasn't enough. Guess what else is going to show up on Gears 5? The Terminator for some reason. So, yeah. As if Alien Bugs wanted it off. You know what? I'm I'm totally fine with that. Because I want to be a Terminator to beat up weird alien bugs. And they also have a new mode for that called Escape. Now, now thinking about things that I almost forgot about talking about. Where basically, three men, you got to outrun a chemical bomb you set. If you stay in one place too long, you're going to get asphyxiated and or dead. Yeah. So, yeah. And, oh, did I mention you got to fight the locust slash hive slash whatever the aliens are called? Because I did not play 4 yet. It's crazy. The whole game series is crazy. But it, it looks like a crazy amount of fun. Yes, it does. And I definitely have to get back with it to keep up with the story. All right. So, there's Dying Light 2. Again, another thing that's not my cup of tea because it's another zombie game. And, you know, you face all these wackos, human wackos, when you don't face zombies. But it looks like fun. You know, get, give you some power core elements, some melee attack elements. One of the, one of the, one of the premier first-person melee fighters out there, even along with first-person shooting. Um, it looks interesting. Never was my cup of tea because you got shooters everywhere. But it, it should be fun for, for people who want that breakneck action where you can Run and jump on buildings similar to Mirror's Edge and, you know, just take it to zombies and cray craze. Just punch them out or just shoot them. You can pick whatever. It's pretty good. I'll be honest with you, I didn't play Dying Light either. I was totally off on zombies, but now I'm back on with zombies. So I want to play this game. It should be interesting and it should be also adapt to choices you make kind of games. So that those, those are always fun. So... That's going to be something I'm going to be doing. And unlike uh, Gears, I'm not going to play the first game to play this game. <laughs> I'm going to let the second game be my first game and just have to say whatever happened in that other game, whatever happened, is, they say is caught new. I say whatever. All right. I'm not going to even complain. So, Psychonauts. 
What do you think about the sequel? You know what? I didn't play the first Psychonauts, but I used to work for somewhere not named Video Game Armada. So I did a lot of research on the game. It looked really fun. The first game, from from a, a gaming aesthetic, it was just your basic platform. But it was a story that captured people's attention because it was crazy. It was weird. Tim Schafer and Rich, Richard Stephen Horvitz, the voice of Raz, they made that game what it was. And it was amazing. So, you can't go do anything but go from up from there, you would hope. So hopefully Psychonauts 2 brings it. Hmm. And it does look weird. At the very end, you see who's potentially the big bad at a game only to be terrified by something even worse. That's insane. Well, I'll be honest with you. I'll, this is probably one of the impressive games that I've seen on the show that I probably won't play. I just don't have an interest, but there's plenty of people who will, and I'm super happy about that. And I'm glad you guys are going to finally get a sequel to a game you loved for years? Yeah. Decades? Yeah. Which reminds me, hashtag finish Brutal Legends. <laughs> hashtag finish Arkham, which, by the way, you can get that on the Game Pass store or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. Which, oh, you can get 34 games on the Xbox Game Pass store. That's pretty neat. I think it's 100. 100? Wow. I need to do research. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see what else. We are running out of meaningful games. I don't want to step on your toes. You're the one true Omni Gamer. Oh, so. I wouldn't say that. Crossfire! Ah. Uh, uh, so, lots of missing my guess. Don't quote me on that. I don't have my research tools. Very out of character, so me, but I'm eating. Whatever. Um, I think it's a Chinese first person shooter experience with military combat that Xbox decided to partner up with. And the gameplay looks solid, but more. More likely, the video scenes with all the people look very cl corny and 80s cliche. <laughs> That's up my alley. I like that. Me too. I was going to say it's like Call of Duty. It has Call of Duty sensibilities, but the flair for the 80s. Yeah. Uh, I, it's, and it's called Crossfire X, by the way. I was just being funny. But I can't help it. You get caught up in the crossfire. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what's... Left. Let's see what is there was a there was a game that caught my eye. I think there was a black lady in it, and it was a lot of ship. You could make your own buildings. You uh, hug, hug deers. Yeah, that was uh, Spirit Fair. Yeah, you could create your own city ship, and then the people you're interacting with are possibly dead people, and wow. you're taking them to the hereafter. Hmm. That is still kind of neat, because it has, like, these elements of, like, a Zelda act thing. It's very nice. It's unexpected, but I caught my eye. I thought that was cute. Uh, don't forget about RPG Time, The Legend of Right. <laughs> or whatever his name is. Wilbur? Yeah. Where you're basically fighting on a kid's oh, yeah, your notebook. Book, notebook and pop-up books and coloring books. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish it was more of just a fleshed-out game. But... And like I said, originality overrated, but I'll give them credit for this. It, it, it will pop in the marketplace because it's, it's doing something really different like that, but it's still kind of neat. There's also Age of the Empires 2, the definitive edition. Yeah. I used to play that all the time. That was one of my first PC games, and I enjoyed it. Although it was a strategy game, and you know, I'm more of a action junkie than a strategic master of strategery. Mm -hmm. But still, I enjoyed it. And if you are a strategic master of strategery, go ahead and pick it up. Especially if you want to know what classic strategery was back in the day before you had all these highfalutin space marines or the war crafts with mm -hmm. the orcs and the gnomes and the uh, elves were ravens. <laughs> Uh, so I guess that leaves one big one left, doesn't it? Not really. There is 12 minutes. 12 minutes and we're out of here. Uh, it's about a game not this is going to be clear. I was trying to be funny <laughs> based off some sort of wrestling tag team. I, I missed that one, 12 minutes. Remember, that was the one was top down. The guy was saying, did you kill your father, honey? And I said, no, he had a hard track. I know, but... You know, but there's a guy coming. Uh, oh, right. That's so weird. It is a little weird, but it's based off Groundhog Day. You know, 
Apparently you only have 12 minutes to save your wife from this mysterious man in black who is going to try to arrest her and arrest you or something. Mm. It's neat enough. Yes. Uh, and Fantasy Star Online Oh, that's right. Too. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. I, I never... I played the Fantasy Star back on <clears throat> Sega. Uh, but in recent times, and when I say that, I mean like 10 years plus ago... I tried to play Fantasy Star Online back on Xbox, I want to say. And unfortunately, I I think they shut down before I could really get into it. It was always one of my gaming regrets that I never was able to play that because it looked pretty neat from what I can see. Now, they're making up for lost time. Fantasy Star Online 2, coming next year. Amazing. I can't wait. Yep. And well, well done, Sega, if I might say. Mm-hmm. And there's also, and, and speaking of Animu, Tales of Arise. If you just need more Animu in your life, <laughs> go ahead and play that, too. Yeah. Don't play, I don't play a lot of Tales games, but I do know of the characters, and I know people like them. Yeah. Project, Pro, uh, Project Cross Zone was a good game I played back in the day, and a lot of Tales characters came from there. So that looks like it's going to be another winner. Yep. It looks pretty good. Ah, we are almost done. There is the Elden Ring, which not only has Banco Nam... Uh, Bandai ban ban Namco. Banana ban 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 <laughs> And then... <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> the Banana Namcos. <laughs> Namco Bandai, right? Right. And from software. Yeah. But the guy pending this bad boy... Is one of them, I believe there's two. One of them is George R.R. R. Martin. The Game of Thrones guy. Nope. Really? Really, yes, that's him. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you got I got confused with J.R.R. Token. No, no, that guy's dead. He's been dead. dead for a while. I don't he know is. if he's doing video games right now. Maybe he did back then, but maybe not now. You're right. But you're, he, you're right. My bad. That game looks that game looks like you can draw on a lot of people who like that. Mysterious, very, very middle, medieval, mystical, dark game style. And similar to Game of Thrones. It starts out with Pete, all these hands. All these severed hands. The trailer it is very weird. Yes. I'm thinking it's going to be an Americanized version of Dark Souls. Yeah. So it should be interesting. Yeah, it really should. I'll, I'll have to see more if I want to play it or not. If it's going to be as hard as Dark Souls or Demon Souls or Sirico, then it's, uh, it's going to find its audience. Yeah, forget it. They're, the Dark Souls and Sirico ain't hard. They just like to troll you. <laughs> Difficulty is nothing. They just want to kick you in the nuts <laughs> and run away and say, ah -ha, ah -ha -ha, you can't beat me because I kicked you in the nuts. Ah -ha. Uh, but finally... We reached the end, I believe, of all the things we wanted to talk about, and ending it on the new console called Project Scarlet. Ooh. Might as well call it Project Black Widow. But uh, it's coming out next year, during the holiday schedule, what they said, and they're going to introduce the new Halo game that will come with it, Halo Infinite. Oh, that Master Chief. Will nothing kill you? No, I got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But on the whole, yeah, everything is exciting. I kind of wish uh, I had more information about this new console. But all, all, the only thing I really know about is that it's going to be freaking fast. There won't be loading times, or if there are loading times, it'll be, you know, downright, uh, you know, minuscule. Thank you. Hard uh, word. I'll believe it when I see it. I hope I do see it, you know. And there was also something else that I want to do more research on, something called uh, Game pa Game Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. At this point in time, I never used uh, Game Pass because I already have Xbox Gold, and I don't feel like I need to get another thing. But with this new Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, that Xbox Gold comes with it. And if they have a year option for this, that's something... I am going to take advantage of. I would. Yeah, so that's that That was one of the bigger things for me for the show, other than the console and all these butt-tons of games. So I'm going to have to say Platinum Pass of Perfection. 
like I said at the very beginning, all the other co uh, conferences are going to have to work <coughs> like dogs to beat them this year. Yeah. I honestly am right there with you. Like I said before, EA was a good start. Not a great start, but a good start. <coughs> Xbox kicked everyone's butt out of the water already. Mm -hmm. And with Sony bowing out, Nintendo doing their thing, you know, it's just like, you know, all these developers, they don't want to play along. You got the ones that are here. Yeah, I got a long, hard road to fight. Yep. Phil Spencer already said, allegedly, that that conference had the most games out of anyone. And they win by quality alone. Quantity? I mean, quantity alone. Quality? It was there, too. They made sure they got theirs in. It's like, hey, WWE Superstars, is that Keanu Reeves? <laughs> hey, I've been waiting for this game. I've been waiting for that game. That game looks neat. That game looks neat. There is no way that I see these other uh, companies, these other conferences, outdoing what Xbox did. Although, the impact of one game, well, like, well, one game uh, uh, excitement might overpass their one game excitement for some of these out. These games, because most of the big pops came from uh, stuff that's already out. But I don't know if they could have like a whole show that was just fantastic. So Platinum Pass of Respection, Bethesda, Ubisoft. Is Ubisoft there or no? Uh, they will be. Let me. I'm checking right now. Bethesda, Ubisoft. It'll be tomorrow. Yeah, Bethesda, Ubisoft, and Nintendo Direct. You guys got your work cut out for. Don't forget about Square. <laughs> oh. And Devolver, but Devolver's more like a skit more yeah. than anything. Yeah. So, so good luck, Square, with your Avengers thing. It <laughs> yeah. better be good. Well, I hope you, they can make you like... Uh, you remember Ultimate Alliance, where you created your own shield agent? Yeah. I kind of hope it's like that. You create your own Avenger. Avengers Alliance, yeah. Yes, excuse me. So, yeah, that was it. So far, as far as we could tell... Microsoft is the clear winner. Yes. But there's plenty of press conferences left to go. Yes. Let's see if they can beat them. Not likely, but let's see. But until next time, this is Lunch on the Gamer Boss Braun. And the information number true backlash. Telling you to stay tuned for the next video game Armada transition. Till then, though, take care. Peace, yo. Peace and chicken.